The earliest description of cancer can be found in the Edwin Smith Papyrus way back in 1600 BC when it describes a case of breast cancer with an attempt to remove it by surgery. Unfortunately, it also mentions that there was no cure for cancer. Medicine and oncology since then has made outstanding progress. The progress has been astonishing. Having said that, we continue to grapple with very many problems. Cancer has now become the second leading cause of death worldwide in a span of less than a decade. And in 2018, there were an estimated 9.6 million deaths due to cancer. Is there an economic loss due to lack of cancer surgery investment? There is. We need to understand that all solid tumors, especially if they are localized, are best treated with the help of radical oncologic surgery, but most of the LMICs suffer from lack of investment uh, in cancer surgery. And you can see in this particular picture that there is an alarming increase in the graph which shows that by 2030 the cumulative GDP loss would be estimated to be around 6 trillion US dollars. Look at this situation. We have 42,000 patients of cancer at Tata Memorial which are treated by 188 staff members. Compare that with the MD Anderson Cancer Center where 41,000 patients are treated by 1,700 staff at Houston in Texas. I've had the opportunity to work with a global group to try and look at the problems that are associated with low and middle income countries and we want to try and see how we can change wherein we have islands of excellence but we need to have more standardized care across these nations. In other words, we want to develop from dedicated cancer units to comprehensive cancer centers across a country like India. For example, let's look at Tata Memorial Center in Mumbai. In this particular slide, you see the light blue bars, they indicate the number of new registrations of cancer that we have seen over the years. Last year, we recorded 75,000 new patients of cancer. The blue bars reflect the admissions that we have in our hospital. The blue bars haven't gone up as much as the light blue bars and the reason is simple. To create a dedicated manpower in terms of nursing, paramedical staff, doctors and specialists is one major challenge. And the other challenge is creation of hospital beds. We have a ratio which is again very typical for any LMIC. The picture that you see over here also shows a busy outpatient clinic at the Tata Memorial. For a person in a country like India, this is not a shock. For anyone else, especially in any of the G8 countries, this would be a shock as to how can one manage this. Remarkably, we obviously develop our own systems wherein we are able to offer high quality care to a large number of patients, uh, which is a usual problem with a populous country like India. In Tata Memorial, every year we see about 0.5 million patients who visit us. And the footfall over the next one decade is expected to double and we think that we will be seeing 1 million patients a year by 2030. This is a picture which shares with you what I consider as one of the most complex operations in the body. Indeed, the world acknowledges that pancreatic cancer surgery is dangerous, challenging, complex in the face of an aggressive cancer which is located in an anatomically complex part of the body. We have evolved over a period of time. I am a pancreatic cancer surgeon by specialization and over a period of 20 years it's been a gratifying journey but we have now started to produce results which are not only a benchmark for low and middle income countries but are comparable with the best in the world. Does this happen overnight? Not at all. It's taken us a decade and a half as we complete two decades of complex pancreatic surgery. It requires patience, passion and consistency. Look at this gentleman with the Thai cave rescue. No one knew about him and what did he say after the Thai cave rescue? I dive for passion and always wondered if it would have a purpose. Last two weeks was what I prepared for for the whole of my life. The next picture 
is about a sport which is very dear to me cricket there's one gentleman whose name is synonymous with being a world famous sportsman an iconic cricketer perhaps the best cricketer in the last hundred years Sachin Tendulkar the other name is of yours truly this was the time when I used to play cricket at a junior level in Mumbai and I have enjoyed playing my cricket then and even now I do try to find time to play cricket and enjoy this great sport. I have done reasonably well in surgery and continue to enjoy my journey thanks to the passion that I have and thanks to the consistency that we have established in surgery. Unfortunately, I did not become a cricketer but what made Sachin special? What makes him unique? The thing that separated him from rest of the boys was the fact that he had remarkable, almost unbelievable consistency 33 years ago. But even when he retired after an international career of 24 years, he still had the same consistency and the same passion. Clearly, consistency is what transforms average into excellence. While we are doing this, we are also bombarded with constant evolution and development of modern technology. And technology is a wonderful tool. For example, you can see robotic surgery being performed by me. It's superb technology, easy on the ergonomics. It's a wonderful toy, if I may say, in the hands of skilled and experienced and capable surgeons. It can also be dangerous. Technology is like a wild horse. We are the ones who need to master it and we should never be slaves of technology. While we continue to master it, we also need to be aware that the basics don't change. You need to invest in time, you need to have patience, you need to have passion and you need to negotiate your learning curves before you can master robotic surgery. More than technology, there are other important drivers which continue to inspire me. Making impossible possible is something which is the way forward, in my opinion. To do that, I need to challenge myself again and again. And I also need to mentor generations ahead. This is a picture of a complex pancreatic cancer operation that has been undertaken and done successfully. A few years ago, this operation was impossible but now we are able to do this fairly routinely is this because i have improved yes to an extent i have partly improved but i think it's no more about me it's about a team i'm truly blessed to have a fabulous team all of them who are dedicated to the art and science of gastrointestinal cancers talent can win matches but teams win championships so my journey of excellence in pancreatic cancer surgery began in Switzerland and in Germany in the year 2000 and continued for a few years thereafter. I enjoyed learning and making attempts to master pancreatic surgery then, came back to India, implemented and standardized this kind of surgeries and then of course had the opportunity to train a large number of young surgeons and students. And when they remember me on teacher's days and other days when they express words of gratitude, it's extremely satisfying. But you know what is more satisfying? I want you to focus on the picture which shows the India map. Today we have surgeons who are doing high quality surgery in parts of India where it was never done before. So complex pancreatic surgery is no more just in the metros, but it's also in the smaller cities and towns across the length and breadth of India. But these young, highly specialized and motivated surgeons and doctors need excellent institutions so that they can stay motivated and enjoy what they are doing. It's also important that patients get access to high quality care close to their homes rather than traveling vast distances to reach our hospital in Mumbai. And this has been our effort. For example, you can see this beautiful hospital in Varanasi, which was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi. We've also developed hospitals, not just in Varanasi, but also in Punjab, in Guwahati, and in Vaisak. But the biggest pleasure that I get is to visit these hospitals, be a part of their ecosystem, spend time with the young doctors and the surgical teams over there, 
operate with them transfer our skills with them exchange ideas with them learn from them and keep moving ahead and taking the art and science of cancer care across india i leave you with what is clearly a dream that is expected to become a reality in the next 3 to 5 years a state of the art cancer center which would be catering to each and every individual in this country across socio economic strata and serve the needs of the nation for the next 50 years to come of course in life what you really want never comes easy but as vincent van kock the famous dutch artist said great things are done by a series of small things brought together thank you